Thinking about using a GE or Leviton three-way smart switch in your smart home? Today we're going to install and set up a three-way smart switch. Stay tuned. Hi again, John Stone, the DIY smart home guy. Smart switches are an important part of every smart home. And if you have three-way switches, putting in the smart switch replacements can be a bit confusing. So to clear it all up, we're going to review how a standard three-way switch is wired into a home and how the smart switch is different from a normal switch. There's also things you need to know when installing a three-way smart switch. For the demonstration, we'll be using the GE Smart Dimmer Switch model number 12724 and the GE Add-on Switch model number 12723. I'm happy to confirm that this process is essentially the same for the Leviton Smart Switch. As usual, there are informational links and affiliate links in the description below. So let's look at how a three-way switch works. In a normal three-way switch installation, you'll have two switches that control a single light. Let's switch the power off at the circuit breaker. And now let's open up one of the switch boxes. When you look at the back of the switch, you should see two black wires and one red wire. If you pull the switch further out of the box, in the back, you should see a white wire and a copper wire, probably inserted into wire nuts. Both switch boxes will look identical inside. So basically what you're looking at on this wall is the same thing that you see on this diagram. What's happening is, in one switch box, you have power coming in from the circuit breaker. This is called the line voltage. The other two wires are, in essence, traveler wires. There's one black wire and one red wire. And in the other box, you'll have the same red and black wires and a single black wire going out for the load. Also, in the box, you'll have a neutral wire and a ground wire. Looking at it from a mechanical perspective, you can see when both switches are in the same mechanical position, in this case being up, the power flows through the first switch across the black traveler wire and out through the black load wire. When you change the position of the first switch, there's no path for the electricity to move from the circuit breaker to the light. Changing the position of the second switch completes the circuit across the red traveler, and now we have power to the light, so of course the light comes on. And moving the first switch back to its original position breaks the circuit once again. A three-way smart switch works much differently. With the smart switch, only one switch is ever in control. As you can see, once we finish the installation, the black traveler wire becomes an extension of the load wire and the red traveler is turned into a command wire from the add-on remote switch back to the smart switch. So what we're going to do is identify the line voltage wire in the first box, which is the wire coming from the circuit breaker, and then we splice together the two black wires in the second box. It's important you pay close attention to what's going on so that you don't cross your wires. If you're not comfortable with these instructions, please contact a licensed contractor in your area. Okay, so we've already turned off the power at the circuit breaker but it's always a good idea to use some sort of a voltage tester to make sure that you don't have any power there. We'll just turn this on real quick so you can see what's going on. Breaker's on. We've got power. And the switch is turned on so it's coming all the way through. So we got power. Turn the power off and we've confirmed that our power is off at the switch. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to figure out which one of these switch boxes is being fed from the circuit breaker so we can make the determination of what is the line voltage and what is the load voltage. So to do that, we are going to remove the wires. Now it's also good to point out right here, we have the red and the black. It's kind of hard to see, but if you look back in the box, you'll see that the red and black actually go in to the same sheath or the same housing. And then you have one that'll either go into a wire nut or it'll go into a little sheet there that only has a black and a white wire. We'll make this a little more clear so you're not looking inside that box. This is what's called 14.3 Romex, and it has a red, a white, a bare copper, and a black wire. This is what's going on with the traveler wire, so it's gonna continue the neutral on the ground, but it's gonna carry a red wire and a black wire also, and this is what's going in between these two switches. What's coming into the box is just a standard 14-2, and that's just going to have the black, the copper, and the white wire. Okay, so the only wires I really have to pull off are the two single black wires, and I can ignore the traveler wires. So we got that out, and we can do the same on this other side here. 
So I can see right here, the red goes in with the black. And then I've got on this one, the solo black wire comes out here. So we should just be able to twist that out a little bit. You can either push in a small jeweler screwdriver, as I showed you in one of the other videos, or you can just twist it back and forth until it comes out. Now, I've got the two single black wires here, and one of these is going to be my line, which would come in from the circuit breaker, and the other one is going to be the load, which goes up here to the light. So now that those are out of the way, they're touching nothing, we're going to turn that circuit breaker back on. And we'll take our voltage tester, and you can see that I have power there, and I have no power there. So this box right here, this is my line voltage coming in, and this will be my load voltage going out. So problem solved, breaker off, confirm that we have no power at the circuit, and we're good to move on. And now that we know what's what, we can just go ahead and we can finish taking these switches apart. So let's take a look at the primary smart switch. On the back side of the switch, you'll see four terminals labeled line, load, neutral, and traveler. You'll also see a green stud or screw, which is for the ground wire. On the add-on switch, you only have two terminals. One is for neutral and one is for the traveler, which is the red wire. Many people ask me what to do if you don't have a traveler wire or a neutral wire. Unfortunately, if you don't have a neutral wire, this won't work, and if you don't have a traveler wire, you're probably not starting with the three-way switch. And again, this video won't help you. I myself am looking for post-construction solution for these problems, but as of the date I released this video, I found nothing that I would recommend on this channel. If something does become available, I'll make sure that I get the word out. So, let's get these installed. Okay, so the smart switch, which is the one with all the terminals, it'll be the heavier of the two, we're going to install this on the line side of the circuit. Is you're going to want to pull that tape off the traveler. Let's just get that out of the way. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to want to do. Sorry, I didn't understand the question I heard. Is let's pull out our ground wire and our neutral wires because we're going to need those. Now what we have is a nice big mess of wiring. All right, now we're going to want to hook up that ground wire to the top here and we're going to need a little pigtail or a jumper wire for this. If you don't have this laying around, you can pick up wiring down at your local home center, Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever and you can get some 14 gauge wiring and you can use that as a nice jumper. Okay, so we've solved the lighting problem, sorry about that, and we've got prepared two green ground wires. Now the green wires will go into where these bare copper wires are, green for ground. Now you can use normal wire nuts, I'm using these quick connectors here. Now in this particular one that's a three, so I'm going to need to get a four connector. Okay, now for your choices, you can either just use a standard wire nut. All the wires just screw together inside there. Makes a nice mechanical connection. Uh, or you can use these quick connects. This is an ideal Insure four port connector. Now it's got a nice little see-through window here. I always like to give everything a good tug. It's kind of hard to get this in the camera so you can see it. Very small working space here, but we'll do our best. So we've got those white wires in there into this one. We've got our ground wires over here into this one. You can see the green wire coming off. And then in the box, you will find a white jumper wire. And they always have one leg that's too long for it to be useful. So we're going to go ahead and trim that down a little bit. All right. And that last one will go right in there. And there you go. So we've got our neutrals, our new ground, 
and that's a lot of wires. So let's start getting this back together. All right, we got the ground wire. Let's get it. Now sometimes it's better if you turn it upside down so that screw will fall out a little bit. Okay, so get that hooked. Get that nice and tight. So again, just for clarity, because I know it was kind of hard to see what was going on and I didn't show you me wiring it in. So the wires that came in from the 14-2, as we talked about earlier, that goes into essentially what would be the bottom of the switch. So if the switch is oriented like this, if you looked at the bottom, you've got your line in voltage, you've got your line in voltage, and your neutrals going to the neutral side. And then on the 14-3, which is what has the black and the red wire, those are going into what would be your load and your traveler wire. And of course these would be have a jumper that would come off to your ground. So that's how all that gets wired in. Okay, and we're going to just kind of gently but firmly push this back into the box. Now I'm not going to get it all the way tightened down in there. All right, so again, I'm not wanting to get it all the way in there, just enough. The other thing that you'll notice I did is this little switch down here. It's not really a switch, it's a notch. And then there's an indicator light down here. I put that at the bottom. So up is on and down is off. All right, now let's get the add-on switch in there. So before we start on the add-on switch, if you had a lot of trouble getting that ground wire around that ground stud, Sometimes it's easier before you put everything together like we did on the last one. Okay, so if you remember our diagram, we have the two black wires that are in the box that goes up to the load, which is this light right here. Put those into the splice. Get those out of the way. Pull out our neutral wires. Pull out our ground wires. Okay, so we've got the add-on switch here. Got this here, we'll go ahead and turn power back on. And what you should see over here is the little blue light. If you got the little blue light, that means you should so far have everything wired up. Test the on, test the off. Then we're gonna wanna test the on. It should be the top, that turns on, that turns off. Now that should mean, that means the switches are properly or oriented and the switches are properly wired. Now, if you restore power and this doesn't work or you don't get this little blue light, before you feel that you got anything wrong, I suggest that you pull this back out, double check the position of your black wires, make the load should probably be at the top and the line in should be at the bottom. So I'll kill power one more time and let's get this back together. All right, now that we have everything back together, Turn our power back on, little blue light, turn it on, turn it off, a little slow, turn it on, turn it off, and now we're ready to put this into the wing cub. So as I stated before, if you don't have a neutral wire and you've looked deep inside the box, I can't help you. I hope this video cleared all that up. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to click like. Over here are a couple of other videos that you might enjoy. For more reviews, tips, and DIY videos, visit azhb.com. And thanks to all of you that already follow me over on Facebook or Twitter. Both are at DIY Smart Home Guy. Until next time, cheers.